Levi. We got a real treat for y'all today, man. Super, man. Super y'all, treat. y'all stay tuned because uh, it's all about the successful felon movement. It's all about the lower recidivism movement. We got not only a successful felon, but someone that's putting people on out here in the streets in the free world. And he been putting on since he been out this whole time. I've been out this is Marvin Carter. Number is a powerful number. Marvin Carter. Oh yeah. We gonna know him as Yahuda, man. Yeah, Hooda, very powerful yeah, name for a very powerful yeah, Hooda, brother, man. man. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna talk about this whole term oh, insurance yeah. policies. We're gonna talk about the straw man and the secure party creditor. Oh, and we're and we're talking about real experience, someone that's actually doing this type of stuff. So y'all go ahead and listen, stay tuned, don't miss nothing, watch to the end, like, share, and subscribe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the whole term life insurance. All right, all right. I'm ML Carter, representing ML Carter Trust Corporation, unincorporated business trust, which is part of my straw man and a part of my secure party aspect, in which I have to always mention. And with the whole life insurance aspect with the private banking, man, it's very important to start you a whole life insurance policy dealing with building wealth for future generations of kids and grandkids and their kids to come after you because the beauty of whole life is like when you establish a policy the individuals that are alive they really ain't gonna touch the millions of dollars because some of the policies be millions of dollars you ain't gonna get it I ain't gonna get it but the kids the generation that's how the generation of wealth come so it sustains the identity of them being able to carry on your legacy in the next well, generation. I did hear that you can while you're alive take out loans again. Okay, yes sir, yes sir. So that aspect is true and I and I like when somebody, you know, I just had a conversation, like I said, with some brothers and a sister the other night. So with that topic, it allows you to go in and pull money, pull money out and not have to pay it back. Because what happens is that millions of dollars that you have on reserve pays for the money you pulled out. So that's the beauty of whole life. You know what I mean? The term whole life. You don't never have to pay the money back once you pull it out. But if you try to go and pull out more money, they want that other money back. Okay. Okay. So you got to be smart. If I'm going to pull out a large amount, then I know I can't come back. Unless you pay that <coughs> amount off. And so you talking, okay. if you're talking your policy worth in cash 25 to 50 grand, and you pull out the whole 25 to 50 grand, you know you need to pay that all back before you can pull out anything else. You know what I mean? All okay, right. okay. First question I got, how do you even get into the whole life insurance policy life? Well, it's good to find you an agent, you know, of a company who has been around for longer than 100 years. All this right. is this a fact. And the reason I say that because they guarantee the money. This goes back to... And if this they've goes, been in business 100 years, they're very successful. <laughs> so I'm going to use my company, who I'm with. I'm with a mutual company, and that's another thing. Always be with a mutual company because the mutual company cares more about the people. They don't care about the investors or the owners, CEO. They don't care about the stockholders. They care about me and you. Okay. So make sure it's a mutual company. Another thing is the mutual company itself guarantees your money. So whatever you put in and when the maturation comes, you're going to get your money. Even if the, if the atomic bomb hit this motherfucker, they're going to find your kids. They're going to find the heirs to get them that money. Oh, yeah. Is there a set amount you got to put like to get started? It depends. It depends. It depends on it depends on what type of policy you see. You know what I mean. So it can be it can be a policy where you, like Bruce Lee. I'm gonna use Bruce Lee. He paid for a 250 grand policy, two separate policies, 500 grand, and he bought them. So I didn't understand that when I was in prison. I was like, damn, what do you mean he bought yeah, the policy? He bought the policy so that it guaranteed his kids millions of dollars, guaranteed them, but they can always go back and get the money again. So the guarantee of it is that you know whatever you do, whatever you put in, you can get back out, but you also can access it at any time. So okay. that's, the be- that's the beauty of the guarantee. It's guaranteed, your money guaranteed. Whole life insurance is the most, I want to say, influential financial institution when it comes to especially people like us, you know what I mean? Fellas, that's a great way to invest some money. Have you <clears throat> pulled out money yet? On your I'm, I don't plan on Plan on no, it. I don't plan on it. But he doesn't need to because. No, 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 I don't plan on it. He has multiple income streams. Oh, yeah, I don't so plan on it. Do it grow over time? To, uh, yes, that, or that's, that's that number. The, well, the cash, the cash is what you put into it. Okay. But if you think about it, millions of dollars in return for like 30 grand is 
man, you talking a crazy flip, yeah, man. That is so that's that's why you can't beat it. You know what I mean? So what who what bank you know gonna give you two million dollars on thirty grand? That's true. None. That's so you what got that's a point. That's that's the beauty of it. You know what I mean? No matter the maturation date, like the longest maturation date is probably 10 to 15, 20 years, something okay, like that. Okay. For your for your cash to, you know, be certified. Okay. But Come on, man. We're talking so millions it, of dollars. The Yo, more he, money he I put in a month, the more money I'll get from my policy. I, I can't really say that because, it, like I say, this, it depends on your policy and your contract. And well, my, you mine, I did an extreme because I wanted to test it. So I went with New York Life Insurance. New I York to, Life Insurance. And they've been around for 200 years. Two. They've been around for 200 years. I found Self-explanatory. I, I found one of the greatest companies. They've been around for 200 years. <laughs> so... The agent I have, he, Mr. Uh, Diddley, he, he great because we talk about everything, you know, and yeah. it's, it's more than one way to invest it because they do stock market stuff. So they'll take your money and they'll be flipping. That's what I did. I did the extreme flipping. Okay. So it's like, it's like a, what they call it, uh, stocks, they call it, uh, when you take your money, radical. I want to do a radical investment. So that's what I did. So I pay in 600 and some dollars a month. Radical. So my, in five years, my policy will be done. Is there a certain amount you can? It's gonna be my mine when I'm done. Mine gonna be over thirty some thousand, but all I'm gonna be put in is twenty five. But the whole life aspect is the term life. The term life gonna be two million dollars. So my kids and my wife they're gonna be straight with that policy. You know so what I mean? So it's compounded interest. Yeah, it has man. to be. It's the only way it makes what sense. Yeah. It's the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, compound yeah, interest. Yeah, and like I say, this is where all the wealthy people hide their money. Like it's a guy. Uh, this is a teacher That's people. pretty aggressive too Because yeah. I've talked to other people That only did like $70 a month $100 yeah, see, a month I never heard no one do Multiple nah, hundreds a month Oh yeah I'm doing, doing that radical. radical I'm doing that radical man yeah. Extreme Because I want to make sure That I get out of it While I'm alive too Because once I'm done My tactic is Once I'm done Pull everything got Start another policy Buy it Buy the policy gotcha, gotcha. Take that cash And buy the policy yeah. Now I got a whole nother one doing the same thing again. So I'm gonna build that wealth for them kids. I'm gonna build that wealth for them grandkids. You know what I mean? The appreciation, Bruce Lee. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Before oh, we keep yeah. going, what all you got going on right now? Like I see you got involved. Okay. You know what I'm saying? God is with me. Got a clothing brand, y'all. Clothing see brand. It, you know what I'm saying? All right. All right. Well, this is this is an uh, intellectual property of mine. God is with them. I created this cocoon idea with the words "God is with them" because I think about. I think about, you know, like the concept of being conscious, finding the creator, you know what I mean? Yahweh, we call, when, they recognize, when we recognize Yahweh, we call them Yahweh. Yeah. Okay, so it's 72 names of Yahweh, so it's 72 other ways to say this name. And they say Yahweh, but we here, we might not know it as Yahweh. So I don't take that away from nobody, you know what I mean? Because they conscious enough to know what God woke them up. Yeah, you sure. understand? It's a higher power. Yeah, and I, pre and I appreciate that. Because I talk to a lot of people and they be, man, I know they got that spirit on them. Because my skin go to crawl and we go to, our skin go to crawl together. Because God is with them, you know what I mean? Sure. And that consciousness is a level, man. So to evolve from a state of like the caterpillar, you know what I mean? Barely move, you know what I mean? You, you, you a prey to any predator, you know what I mean? And then to transcend and evolve as a, you know, after you come up out of that cocoon of consciousness, yeah. to evolve and fly away. You don't, you don't went from slugging around to now flying. Crawling the flying. Ooh, you understand? <laughs> so sure. that's where that comes from. Where can from. they purchase this at? If y'all well, want to support the movement. You man. can go online to Creep Carter, Creep Dash, Carter Dash, uh, this is my et, what it is, IG. That's my IG, Creek Dash Carter Dash. It's gonna be a link right down below. Don't yeah. worry about so that. You, you can find me there. And, and inside of that, you got a link is to my Teespring. So when you hit my, uh, my what they call my homepage, you'll see at the bottom it say Teespring.com. And all, I got 90 designs, you know, of, of these different, uh, different designs, man. 90 of them I made. Okay, now. Nah, and then Travel Down Entertainment. I can't forget, I came wow. up here. I'm in Jacksonville. I came up here to Jacksonville. This weekend to support the uh, Fleet DJs, yeah. the Fleet DJs, the Fleet DJs. They're a big, they're a big movement of DJs. It's and we, from Fort Myers, Florida, came yeah. to Jacksonville. Oh yeah, and for a whole week. Oh yeah. So the Fleet DJs is a movement, man. And what we learned in this little convention, like I wasn't there the whole ten hours, but what I learned in that little convention was politicking with the DJs, getting with these DJs, and getting them your music by becoming a member of Fleet DJs and BMB and all these different platform so that they can allow you to basically have your music heard in different states man so i say man that's what i've been looking for how to get the music around the world because it might be somewhere else that want to hear your music 
You know what I mean? Music ain't the same everywhere. Music transitions in <coughs> when you go to different places. So we do, we do music, chopping down entertainment. I do music. I'm, I'm an artist, Creep Carter, you know what I mean? I'm a writer, Marvin Carter, you know what I mean? And I do producing. I, I pick the beats, you know what I mean? I do the production, I get the videos made, I do it all, you know what I mean? Because producing ain't just making no beat, it's, it's production, not. you know what I mean? It's everything inside of producing. As okay. someone that has experience in pr uh, promoting, yes, you gotta have a network where DJs will push your music. Because we got a DJ, we did a show with Nephew Tommy, and the DJ showed out Dr. Doom. Yep. Showed out, oh, yeah, I know they want to take him on tour. Oh, yeah. He done been to all different cities with nephew Tommy off of one show. Oh, yeah. So that DJ could be playing his music in yeah. all these other cities, yeah. in all these other cities. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the <clears throat> DJs is a network when you're into that. So the beauty, the beauty yeah, that, of the fleet DJ was that select a few of them liked that our song. We got a song called World Tour that you can find on YouTube, Creek Carter. That's on YouTube. I got, I got, I'm with Spotify, I'm with uh, Distro Kid, I'm with all these different people as Creek Carter. So on YouTube Music, Creek Carter, you type it in, my music will pop up. One of the songs is called World Tour. It's a dance song. And they took that song and, you know, they asked the guy, hey man, what you think them guys would say if we take this song and use it and I DJ it? That's why I came up with it because they, they chose the song on their own. They selected the song on their own. That's a great promotion. You, you know what I mean? The song promoted itself yeah. just because of how it sounded. That was my point again about the era. You never know who like your music, man. That's why I haven't given up. You know, even with the age difference and all that, I don't look at it like that. I just love music, man. So if I can get in the door with my nephews or my niece, my daughter, whoever want to get up and do some music, I'm already in the door. That's what I'm looking at. So we got the whole term life insurance. Yeah. We got the clothing line. Yeah. We got the label. Oh yeah. Uh, Chopping down ENT. Yeah. Creek, I look him up. Creek Carter. Creek oh, Carter. Yeah. He also has a lawn care service. Oh yeah, yeah. We ain't yeah, talk yeah. about that. Big businesses. Go, go <laughs> businesses on top of go okay, ahead. okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. So when we got when I got out of prison, I started as a CDL. I went into the CDL thing. You know, I'm working for a glass company in Pompano Beach, Florida through work release. Well, these people liked me so much, they made me a production manager. So I stayed in Pompano for three years outside of prison. So Work ethic. Oh, so work. I ran their company, they paid me $18 an hour. You know what I mean? So I lived at my car, I lived at my truck without even nobody knowing this, man, for about six months, four to six months, no lie. It was, it was, it was a nice time. And I was waking up every morning in the Walmart parking lot in Pompano and going inside, uh, I'm going inside uh, uh, what is this, Planet Fitness, Brush my teeth, work out and everything, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Then go open the glass. they got showers in them too. They, go, they do, <laughs> so they got everything. Right. So, right, look, so look, I'm brushing my teeth, everything. <laughs> no, I'm brushing my, listen, I'm brushing my teeth and everything for <laughs> almost six months, man. This this is this was my, not just that, my determination. Not to go back to where I came from. Better believe it. That was my determination. So I said, you know what, I'm, I'd rather stay up here knowing this solidified finances. You know, I'm, I'm founded up here with this money. You know what I mean? They paying me almost four grand a month. The hell I'm a rut, man, I'ma sleep out this car. I'ma sleep in the back of this motherfucker, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So make a long story short, I did that until I established at least 15, I had about $15,000 in the bank. So I said, Come you know on, what? man, perseverance. Yeah, so when the 15 grand was in the bank, I said, you know what, I'm like, I gotta go and leave, cause my wife, my future wife, she wasn't my wife yet, she hadn't got pregnant, you know what I mean? Come traveling up and down. So make a long story short, I had to go, I had to go back. I couldn't leave with down there pregnant, you know what I mean? And we had to get somewhere to stay, you know how that goes. So make a long story short, Moved back to Fort Myers, tried to use my CDL because I was going to college while I was up there. I was going to college for the CDL for Sheridan West College. I was doing so much, bro. I was going to college. I was working at a college at nighttime and I was working for the glass company. Bro, I had three, bro, I, was, bro, I had three hard. big things going I was hard. doing. Going hard and sacrificing sometimes a lot. I be so fall, bro, sometimes I'll be falling asleep, bro, driving back. It's 12, 1 o'clock and I still got to get my ass up and go to work. Damn right. You feel me? This is right. my determination. No lie, bro. That's why I say, man, you, you got to be determined. Ambition. I was determined. Yeah. Keys, so, make a long story short, when I got to vote my the company that I was working for, uh, Suncoast, uh, there was a movie, uh, what is it, Suncoast Lumber, didn't work out well. They, Some guys there, man, I was Hebrew, you know, they got to the religion thing. They were Christian, I was Hebrew, and didn't work out. This, this is no lie. Guys, I'm in the truck with, the truckers who gonna be helping me. Bro, these people were so upset that I'm Hebrew, and I'm not Christian, they trying to have conversations with me, and the conversation always go left. You understand? Because it's 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 not gonna be a good conversation if you're trying to, you know, basically force me to accept Jesus yeah. in the way that you accept Jesus, and then I can't tell you nothing. So it was never working out. So they went to the boss man, who yeah. is a big Christian, because Suncoast is about Christianity. They got a church and everything. Oh man, 
They find a way to get me fired. They ain't even finna get in that. That's, 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 that's they find a way to get me fired, bro. So they got me fired after two weeks of being at this job. So now I'm in four miles with no job. I say, you know what? I just took the money I had, and me and my brother started the company. This is going to the company, the, the uh, miscellaneous cleaning company. We went company. with my idea. Everything I had to create, I had to went to banks. Banks wouldn't give me no loan because of my background. It's a fact. They wouldn't give me no. They wouldn't give me no loan because they say my background. Even to this day, they still won't give me a loan because they, they say I get red flagged because of my background. Knowing that we supposed to be cleared of all that, knowing we done been to prison, we served our debt to society. Yes, that ain't supposed to be over our head. We supposed to be in a recidivism rate. We done changed it. We out here lowering it. We doing what we supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? We are adding to the community, not taking away from the community. Bro, no lie. I say, you know what? I'm gonna take this little money. I'm gonna get a trailer. I got a trailer. I already had a truck. Got a trailer. Got a bunch of like uh, uh, malls. We got man. We went about all type of stuff. We just sat in this store. Me and my brother. We sat in a hot ass store. No AC. No nothing. Just sat in there like a little office. And we waited on people to call. We passing our flyers. No lie. Passing our flyers on Facebook. I don't even know nothing about Facebook. No lie, bro. When I went to prison, wasn't no Facebook. I ain't know nothing about Facebook. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to get on there and, and politic. We try to get people to come. And, you know, call us in. So we go cut some grass. And we do miscellaneous. So we do. We do remodeling, light remodeling. We do uh, painting. We do whatever you can think about the miscellaneous aspect. Gotcha. And on the majority side, we cut a lot of grass. So that company brings a lot of money in by itself. And it's been seven years. That company been in business seven years. Nice, nice, nice. What was your main motivation for going so hard, bro, since you got out? Man, a lot that, of folks ain't finna sleep in no car and sacrifice all bro, that for that. My main motivation was self-motivation, bro. Yeah. Self-motivation to not <clears throat> want to go back or regrets to being in the streets. I'm tired, I was tired of like, I grew up in the streets, <coughs> so I was tired, you know what I mean? I'm tired, I'm like, man, you know what? This shit, it can't, I can't go back. But the first day out of prison, first day out of prison, that's no lie. I went and got with some brothers and some family members, first day out of prison, bro. Three o'clock in the morning, they wanna go ride around and party like it's the old time. I wasn't even with them. It was just, I went from Pompano to visit, first night out. And I got in the car with these people. Don't you know we got shot at and everything. These people, in, they in some heat. They ain't told me nothing. You know what I mean? We getting shot at. Right, man. Bro, I'm dodging bullets. <laughs> I'm, this, I'm dodging bullets. People trying to kill her. People trying to kill the people that's with her. Bro, I'm dodging bullets. This is my first night out. This, a, this is no lie. Then I found myself 20, 30 minutes later after the shooting with a gun. In all black. Pissed off that I just got shot at. I had to, I had to regress that quick. And this is no lie. This is this true story, bro. You guys, my brother, if you ever see my brother, don't you ask him. I want to say, that I, night. Met, I met your uncle or your cousin. That's my uncle. And dead, prison. that was dead. The man, the, the, his uncle said this man was a big dope boy, robber yeah. on the street, so yeah. it's <coughs> easy to get caught back up oh, yeah. into that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's how to keep the rate so yeah, high, man. bro. Yeah, yeah man, so, so that, that right there, that was like a turning point, because that was the first day out. So that, it, it dawned on me, because I hadn't slept out of the car yet. This, remember, this is my first day out of prison. Yeah. So it ain't yeah, got to that point, I'm at a transition house in Pompano now. But it, it had my mind like, damn, it's that easy. That That's easy. Why I, race I could have been a victim of certain. I could have got killed. That fuck all that. I could have died. First right. night. First, First night. night. But the spirit's so good, bro. Like the matrix. It's like it's like I was seeing shit with my. Eye, bro, I can't explain it. You know when you get out of prison, different type of glow. Yeah. Y'all all know. We know, especially when you're conscious. Yeah. <laughs> if I tell you it was like the matrix, bro, you wouldn't believe it. It was like I was seeing shit with my eyes flying by me. I swear to God. Bro. I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm flying, dog. That's crazy. That shit crazy. The first night out, bro. If, if it wasn't me seeing the shit, like I'm like I'm dodging the shit, and I had to try to explain it to people, they wouldn't listen to me. I said, bro, I know God with me, bro. I know y'all ain't with me, bro. It's like I can see shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit in front of my eyes, bro? Well, like shit was in front of my eye, like trying to, it's like trajectory, trying to show me where it's at. And I swear to God, bro, that's how I got, bro. The bullets in the car, the car we was in, that bitch got shot up. Couldn't get back in that and drive off. That, that's how serious that shit was. Wake like I said, call. when I sat down, when I sat my ass down, I'm like, damn. It's a wake up call. Wake it was up that call. That easy, bro. That's I could have been call. dead. And I really don't tell the story to everybody, but yeah, bro, yeah. I could have been fucking <clears> dead, <throat> bro. Just, just trying to hang with the brothers and family. Just, you know, on some, just, I miss y'all type shit. And that easy. Boom, I would have been dead. They've still been out there doing the same damn thing. You gotta be aware of who you surround yourself with. Oh, yeah. Man. Big facts. Oh, Big yeah. facts. Especially getting out of prison, and it's, it's the same people. Oh, that yeah. been living the same way. They Forever. didn't go to prison and try to change in us, no. so they don't have to go back to prison. <laughs> the same it. in prison, <laughs> gambling, same. doing the same thing that y'all were doing on the streets, acting like everything's still the street. No, it ain't the street. So, how long you did in prison again? I did, oh, for seven years, I did five years, 11 months. You mind telling why? 
Robin, strong on Robin. Okay, okay, okay. Strong. I was in. I was a part. I was a place in my life where somebody close to me got killed. So my mind, my mind slipped. Somebody killed somebody real close to me. We called this dude brother. You know what I mean? We was looking for the people. You know, we was we was trying to get to get back. You know what I mean? My mind slipped so bad. I find myself doing all type of shit trying to get these people. You know what I mean? That kept my me. This is a fact. So. I just felt like it was y'all were taking me off the street. But <coughs> I was big on selling dope, so I had to, you know something wrong, I stopped selling dope. You know what I mean? I found myself robbing now, you know what I mean? Doing some shit I did when I was a kid, I had been stopped robbing. So that's why I knew my mind had to slip, you know what I mean? Mind slipped, I did. It was gone, man. I had never I had never thought that dark except when I was a kid living in them fucked up situations, you know what I mean? When they killed me, they fucked me up. They Can I speak me. a little bit more too on your past? Yeah, yeah. This man. Dropped out of middle school. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Went to the streets. Oh yeah. Started robbing. Yeah, got bro. into selling drugs. Yeah. What we call powered up yeah, off bro. of selling drugs. Yeah, bro. The man say some close to him got killed. You know, yeah. it brought him out of his character. He got caught up, went to prison. Yeah. Went to prison. I meet this man in prison. Yeah. The man's so intelligent. I'm not thinking he dropped out of school at all because of his vocabulary. <laughs> but I'm being real. Yeah. And a lot of people say this. Man, I, when he got out, I, I gave um, him my father's number to call him. Yeah. My pops asked me what university this man graduated from. <laughs> this is how intelligent he can talk. Yeah, and right. this was all self-taught. And taught himself how to speak Spanish. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, and, and, and Hebrew. I taught, I was teaching Hebrew. Yeah, he was teaching us Hebrew. I was teaching the brother Hebrew. Yeah, he Hebrew. Teaching the brother Hebrew. That, um, no lie. The whole alphabet teaches you know how to read, teaches you know how to do the prayers in Hebrew. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh -huh. So I'm saying, like, what were some of the things you were doing while you was locked up to get yourself prepared? Woo! To never leaving my bone. Ask him, never, bro. Listen, these boys will be doing whatever they're doing every time they walk by what I'm doing, study. Bruh, he's the one that taught me to read everything I got my hands on. Bro, and never just browse over, man. Read it. Yeah. Get that dictionary. Then like y'all been y'all say, man, if you ain't got these tools to read this book, that's it. Don't read it. And that's how I was. I was big on that. Like, what's some of the books? I'll come top of your head, that's like most powerful books that you man. read to help you evolve. Because for him, it's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. For myself, it's Cold of Extraordinary Mind. And I ain't even get to read it. And he had it. Book. Forever. I, was, I ain't even get to read it. But mine, no lie, what's the secret? I love the secret. The secret. By Rhonda, Rhonda Burns. Rhonda Burns. I read that. I, read that. Bro, I love that. I got it right now. And my wife, I got my wife reading. You know why? Yeah. Because it showed me Yahweh. That book reminded me of Yahweh yeah. because of my calling. I found Yahweh in the street. Yahweh woke me up when I was about 15, 16 years old. Okay. There were some brothers. There were some brothers who had the um the sheep, lost sheep house of Israel. I went to a program at Big Cypress Wilderness to the head. Right. This guy, he was a reader. He had these beads around his neck. He practiced, you know, he practiced the magic. But he practiced about the name of Yahweh. And he said, man, he said, you got some strong energy around you. Then the African priest told me the same thing. I said, you got some strong energy around you. He said, man, God is really with you, man. Like, I don't know what's going on, but, well, you got some energy over you. And they, they woke me up. He said, I want you to read, I want you to hear this tape, because it was a tape there. He put it in, Yahweh been Yahweh went to talk. Lost sheep in the house. He went to, you know, doing the speech. And I was like, damn. And I was in the program there. Then when I got out, just people kept coming to me that Yahweh was sending, and they, they, they was on Yahweh, just in the streets, man. And we was, we were politicking, you know what I mean? We, and I was getting more into it, so before I know, I found myself in the trap with the Bible, learning about Yahweh on, on Sunday. The Yahweh and Yahweh class come on. I'm in the trap, watching Yahweh and Yahweh in the trap. I got people around me on Yahweh. Then I had this big, I had this big, big premonition about the, like I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far on this, but man, I had a premonition. I think I showed, shared it with all about the Mayans. Never knew who they were. No lie. It was a three-day premonition, man. I was awake and asleep three days doing this. So, make a long story short, in the premonition, it kept showing me these temples and the hieroglyphics. It kept showing Yahweh name all in this temple, right? I went, this guy that I just told you got killed, me and him went to a gun store, bought these blow dart gun, brought some Target, bought all type of stuff in this place. Man, in the, in the premonition, in the dream, these Mayans used these same things. So this was the same week that I'm having these dreams. So I'm like, damn, how I went? Like we, we couldn't figure it out. Like how I went? What what made me buy this stuff? You know what I mean? So then I started having dreams these same these same the same week and these same day about this stuff. Yahweh and gold all around the temple, man. So we started researching, but they they got a temple called the Temple of Warriors. But they found Yahweh name all in uh, Yucatan Peninsula. 
Because the spirit is real, man. Oh, yeah. Is. So this yeah, is why I say I don't let nobody take that away from me by Yahweh. Nobody. Nobody. Let me, I'm going to tell you a, a little prison story real quick. So, in my bed, a lot of people in jail and prison don't accept a white Hebrew, right? Nah. Facts. So, yeah, because they, they say Esau. They yeah. go into the Esau store. Uh -huh. But I be killing them, you know what I mean? Because think about it, Esau still Israel. Esau and uh, uh, Ishmael. Yahweh, get, yeah. Yahweh made Ishmael to a prison. Yeah. From Israel, right? Because you got Hagar and Abraham. So I, I'm breaking it down to like y'all can't y'all can't just say what you want to say. We gotta we gotta be truthful about it. So I get this is my Israel. my first camp FSP West unit. I come across him, right? I get on the bunk like a couple bunks down yeah. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So we end up vibing and clicking. I'm going to class. He teaching me a little bit more. Well, I get into it with a Spanish dude, right? And if anybody been to prison, Spanish people stick together oh, in prison. Tight. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. Click tight. So I remember. Me and the Spanish dude fight. I'm covered in blood. I'm thinking it's my blood. It's not though. Nah. So, you know, one of my homeboys in the dorm like, bro, go jump in the shower. It's wreck time right now. So I go jump in the shower. He come running in there. All these Spanish dudes are in the dorm looking for me. They don't know I'm in the shower. Yeah. He in it, he he come running in there. All these Spanish dudes on the compound looking for you, bro. Get out the shower, bro. We finna grit. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, what's going on? I'm trying to rush and get out of the shower. What's going on? They thought I done hit the Spanish dude. Yeah. And he was lumped yeah. up so yeah. bad, bro. Yeah. But yeah, I remember that I, when I say, bro, kept it real from the time I met him to the whole time I know him today, this yeah. second, yeah. the yeah. whole time this man has not changed once. Nah. The whole time this man been talking about building growth, yeah. wealth, health, yes, everything to do with progressing in life, whether it's spiritually, physically, mentally, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is the type of mind frames that's locked away in prisons. This is why lower recidivism is so important. Yeah. Because look how this bank went and give this man a loan to help him get on his feet. Yeah. This is the type of stuff we need to figure out how to establish yeah, for people that's getting out of prison <clears throat> oh, yeah. to help them get they on their feet. They still won't give me a loan, like even with like we inherited some properties. So I was trying to use the property. So in the last three years, we inherited property. I'm gonna tell you about my uncle, he left properties to him. So we were trying to get collateral on the property, use the equity in them, the HELOC. That's what they call it, a home equity yeah, line. Yeah. A home equity line of credit, right? Hey, people telling me my background won't allow them to, you know, access the, what? My background, what y'all talking about? What they got to do with the collateral of what, the property? What banks are you going to? I don't know. When they went, Sun Trust is a credit union. Bank of America, oh, well, Wells Fargo. Say, go to credit unions. Yeah. I got, I'm with Suncoast, so Wells Fargo, Bank of America, even Chase, man, I done been to all that. Even try to do private lenders, man. Like, man, I done did it, you know, because we got properties. Like, we got even storefront properties with nothing on them. My uncle was, you know, he was he was strapped, you know what I mean? That's so he crazy. left us some property. So I'm oh. thinking, using my brand, I said, okay, what well, we can use the equity, go and try to pull some money out to help, you know, raise the value of the property, put money back into the property, and still have the property without selling them all. Yeah. Didn't work, so I'm still trying to figure that out. And that's like majority of real estate that's what investors. They do. That's all they do. I know. That's they what invest they do. in the property, raise the value of it by remodeling it, Listen, and then taking that equity then out we, of the house to go get got, more property. We got the ability to remodel. We do that. You know what I mean? So we can be doing it ourselves, but they won't allow us to even get the credit line. Yeah, bro, I've been trying. You can't. Even, I can't even lie to you. I got a profile. What they call a business plan? I got. I got, because uh, uh, I was a certified draft for member in prison yeah. from uh, Laudy. So I made a I made a, a certified orthographic view copy of some plans for a uh, walk-up restaurant. Yeah, he could design buildings nice. and houses. Right? Yeah, so I made them and then I took them to the bank with my little, you know, my uh, profile of, of like my business plan. And these, you know, they, they, she was, the lady, she was all into a college lady. Because down one minute, you got to go through the SBA, the Small Business Association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went through, I went through, I went to the head lady at the college, sat down with her for two hours, had a two hour week meeting with her. She was all into it, she got us a private lender. But my background came back that I had been to prison. No lie, bro. It was just two years ago. Background came back, I've been to prison. And they said, she said, well, why don't you tell me what you did? I said, why was it matter? My, pri my, my private, that's my privacy. It shouldn't matter what I did. Because you paid your debt to yeah. society. She couldn't understand, she was mad. She, she couldn't understand. That's crazy, that's crazy. Yeah. Cause we supposed to pay our debts to society by doing the time. You know what I mean? That's crazy, man.
Mm. In your words, to you, what does success mean? Mm. To be successful, like, what is it? Man, to, to su success, I say it every day, success is what I think it to be. You know what I mean? I say this every day. I am successful because I succeed. So me succeeding would be in anything. Just being able to get up in the morning, like I said, just work out. Being able to get up in the morning to see my babies. You know what I mean? Taking care of my wife, my kids, and just succeeding in <coughs> succeeding every day in the idea of me being able to run the company. Me being able to give my energy out to people, you know what I mean, and get them to reciprocate that good energy back. You know what I mean? Succeeded. That's it. Success is succeed in anything, in any aspect of your life. I say it every day. I got it on like a little mantra on my mirror, man. Every day. Success is because I succeed. I succeed because I'm success. That's it. It's in everything. So if you had one piece of advice for any convicted felon, any person in the street right now, you know what I'm saying, to help lower recidivism rate, <coughs> what would that advice be like? My advice. Let me just let me give this to some words. Real advice. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's motivation, you know what I mean, from self. The biggest thing is never never give up on yourself, you know what I mean? Because the road to success, is, like I said, succeeding in things. So it ain't gonna all be successful. It, it, like Einstein said, he failed a lot of times, but it wasn't really sure. failure, you know what I mean? It's just a different way to do different things he really wasn't trying to do. He just learned how to do different things. So as a convicted felon, when you get out, it ain't gonna be perfect. It ain't gonna be beautiful, it ain't gonna be peachy. But then a lot of people might hold that bias towards you because you've been to prison, because you, you got a better you know what I mean, because the world changes. It's like, now we like these damn people with A's or something. <laughs> <laughs> the world is changing, man. People find out you got a background, oh, you got a background, you know what I mean? It's crazy, bro, like, what the hell does that mean, really? So, I would give that to these people that I know won't be getting out one day or have get, or, or has already gotten out, is to be determined, you know what I mean? Stay committed, don't give up on yourself, you man. Like, Determination, dedication to you being self-motivated. Stay self-motivated. You know, motivate yourself because there ain't gonna be nobody there holding your hand. I want to say I heard Elon Musk <laughs> say it's a million ways to fail building a rocket. Mm -hmm. It's only one way to succeed building it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So in success, it, it, there's a blueprint to it. And everybody has a different blueprint because of their experiences, because of their network, because yeah. of the opportunities that come to them. You just have to figure out what avenue it takes to make sure you succeed. Yes. So if it's a dead end, yeah. you got to figure out how to keep pushing a different direction. Yeah. He used to tell me all the time, there's different roads that lead to the same palace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's true. Yeah. <clears throat> that's true to the fullest. Yeah, man. That's powerful, though. Just knowing that we done been there together, now we out here together, man. Please. That's the reconnection, man, of the universe. You know, reconnecting them good, them good likes, like attract light. You know what I mean? And listen, me and this man been so busy since we've been out, oh, we yeah. couldn't even link. Even yeah. though he stays at the bottom of Florida, I'm at the top of Florida. But look what came, he came up here on some business-minded stuff. Yeah, man. You gotta know I'm gonna take the advantage of see. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, I appreciate it. We appreciate you for being on here, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's just off the wall question, man. People like this crazy stuff. What's one of the craziest things you've seen while you was locked up? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. Man, uh, the officers, the officers killing inmates. Ooh, that's the craziest thing. Right? We, yeah. we, I was in Florida State Prison. Yeah. So when the ambulance come in and it don't go out with them lights on, you know, bit them down. And it happened almost every day. And they'll tell you the inmate fell and bumped his head on the toilet. They got all these, he done hung yourself. They lined them. Hey, I was at the main unit. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was Awful. at the other, the west. I was in the root camp, but yeah. I was in the minimum custody. So yeah. it was kind of pow wow well, I was straight. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one day, remember the skinny white officer, he was looking at you crazy. Yeah. And he, he said something, and you was like, you heard what he said? And I was like, nah. And when we walked back around the track, you ended up going in the laundry room with him. Yeah, that's him. And he was going to fight this officer for no reason. Yeah. Just because he was racist. Get yeah, what the officer said. He said, I know y'all, y'all wait. He said, I know all you niggas. This is no fight. I tell the story. It's a white day. officer now. <laughs> yeah, what? I was big. He was bigger than me. He was on the road. Yeah, he was on the road. And, and, and the Florida State Prison, they, got it. they had got kicked. The fans came in about the steroids. They were selling them roids, man. Make a long story short, he always, the, the officer had a problem with me, for me just being me, and he knew I was of Yahweh, you know what I mean, so, 
this whole thing was, who do I think I am? You know what I mean? And he called me in the letter room, no cuffs, no nothing. Talking shit, talking about I know you niggas. I know you niggas from birth. You know what I mean? There's no lie. And he said, if I slap you and hit you right now, I know you're going to fight back. You know, my mind, like, sir, I say, I come in peace now. But I turn sideways. Like, you talking crying right now. Like, I turn sideways. He's like, I see it in you. You going to... Man, listen, it's I, before I, cameras in the laundry room. Bro. I fight yeah. the police. Like, you don't know. I, bro, I grew up fighting the police. I went, I went to my program. I fight police. Boy, I don't give a fuck. What you got going on? You better beat me up. And I got my hands free. And I told him, I said, I come in peace, man, but I ain't gonna let nobody hurt me. Nobody. I'm gonna let nobody hurt me. would have been a bit bumping, boy. They gonna be wondering why you got me in this laundry room. Bro, he was there when the police put me in the cuffs and whooped me by my peanut butter squeeze. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. I'm telling you, know, if you've been up that road, you know for a fact, if you're willing to fight the police, you really go all in. Yeah, because they're going to try to kill you. They're going to take you out. They're going to try to kill you. That's for real. I had an already said in my soul when I was there, because I was always getting into it with, um, with the short officer sergeant, man. Sergeant Eden? Eden. Eden. Remember he joined his finger? Bro, I was with Chico. Bro. No, <laughs> he stuck his finger. And touch my brain. He scratched that bitch. Listen, bro. Look, look, <laughs> look, glasses, bro. When I say I. <laughs> look, me and Eden, bro. Me and Eden always had bad experiences. I hate Eden. I don't like him. But look, I would never let him put a hand on me. Never, bro, bro. He say, put your hand behind me. I say, I say, I say, Saul, you just told me you're going to do something to me. I say, why would I put my hand I say, by chapter 33, you can't even touch me. Especially knowing I ain't did nothing wrong. I say, Saul, why would I put my hand behind my back knowing you just threatened me? Well, you must don't know where you are. I said, no, I know where I am, but I ain't gonna let nobody hurt. He just went in the nuts. Same thing. Man, this man came to respect me. So now when he come over, he like, y'all don't know, this is a stand-up man. I like this guy. He whooping everybody's ass. Look, he'll come by my bunk. He'll come by my bunk and tell me, this is a stand-up man. Y'all don't know this man is a stand-up man. But I never, I never fuck it down for that dude. Even the captain. The captain, the fat white captain with the cap. We in the, we in the kitchen. They throwing the tray. We done cleaned the tray. They throwing the damn tray. He done came and they said, these dishes ain't clean throwing it. I said, man, I'm not gonna wash them dishes. Y'all wash them dishes. Snap. Bro, I ain't one thing about me, bro. I ain't, listen, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for standing up for what I believe, bro. Y'all ain't for the y'all ain't for the play outside. We done been back here. Cause that when the machine used to break down all the time in the kitchen. Bitch, we got all these damn shits coming from up top. We gotta wash all these goddamn dishes. And from the wing, we're talking about a thousand yeah, trays so, is coming, bro. Man, you got thousands. Fuck, they got bro. carts and carts and carts hey, full of trays. Listen, that captain said, boy, you must be, you must just not got here or something. I said, it ain't even that, Cal. I said, I ain't gonna let nobody, I always tell them the same thing, I ain't gonna let nobody hurt you, bro. Yeah, y'all got me man. fucked up. Y'all think y'all gonna hurt me, boy. We put them in the kid bumping, Cal. Just by knowing these was going on, both of them. Yeah. Getting to the police and the fighting police and they still here? <laughs> God is with them. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Yeah, because I ain't from the count. Every time the police try me, hey, you got that. I <laughs> 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 oh, see what happened. I ain't trying to be a number. No, I'm a, look, I'm a, he know, he know I'm on the yard but trying now, to start a riot. He know this, look, I'm telling everybody to write these crackers up. Look, no, not, he know this. <laughs> I'm in there on the yard, bro, with the pebbles. Man, y'all niggas stop being scared. Let's go. <laughs> that was me, huh? No lie, that was me, boy. The crack like, what y'all out there doing? Cause gay lit. Don't we gonna write y'all ass up today? <laughs> For real, they want to get up for starting a riot, bro. Cause for real, you, I seen people do that, especially at Franklin, trying yeah. to start riots and yeah. get started. Man, they'll beat these people halfway to death, bro. <laughs> I went, I and think it's just make the it scared in me not no, to get scared, bro. Right Cause no lie, I just wasn't scared, bro. I knew they would kill me or something, bro. They were killing people. Bro. I'm gonna tell you the craziest part too. We know this. This man would never ever talk to the police at all. No. Nah. And the police would stay messing with this man by absolutely everything. This man, my, I, I worked in the uh, West Wing, right yeah, up there, yeah. mocked by uh, Officer yeah. McRoy. Yeah. This lady would mess with this man every time she see him. Yeah, man. Every she time she see him. Me, ain't never did nothing to her. Yeah. He'll be in the line, we'll be standing like this, in the line. She'll say his name, bro. Ain't no, my energy, they pissed a lot on my mom, though. I had that energy, though. They, they, they couldn't break them, you know? Nah. 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 Still him, they nah, couldn't. That's what it was. Like, they looking like, who this nigga back in Yeah, they can't break him. <laughs> I'm here, but I ain't down, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. Well, they want to break your spirit. Yeah. Like, the that's chaplain told game. me when I got to work with him. He said, their job is to break your spirit. He said, that's their job. They get trained. Even though they're telling y'all is about, or telling us is about uh, rehabilitation. Nah. Who going to prison about breaking yeah. your soul, breaking your spirit, so you can bow down and be subservient that's like a slave? That's what it is. They're that's dependent what it is. on them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what they want. And then when you get out, you're dependent on yeah. someone else taking care of you, so you don't know how to cope back yeah. in society to take care of yourself, so you go back to the same habits, because you always repeat the same thing without a direction to go yeah. when you go to your past. Like, you really bro. want that, 
you really want that same feeling. And it's like, damn, that ain't, that, it don't match. Prison and the streets don't match. It's not the same. It's not. It's not the same. Like, I can't compare the streets to prison. It's not the same. There's too much luxury out here. There's too many things so beautiful. for us to be better out here. And a, and a lot of people are intimidated ah, ah. to getting out because yeah. they don't know what to do when they get out. Where they're going to go, what job they're going to get. They don't know how their family and friends are going to react to them yeah. being back out yeah. in society. It's so much stuff that's on uh, inmates' mind before they get out back into society to succeed. Because that's when that anxiety and that mental health it's kicks in. Because you done <clears throat> been five and a half years, so you feel like you got to catch back up on yeah. what you missed out on. Yeah. Slow down, man. <laughs> Focus on your steps. Yep. You gotta crawl before you walk before yep. you can fly. You know yep. what I'm saying? Don't yeah. let them break you because yeah. so many dudes get so comfortable in there. Yeah. They become the takeover for the small world in yeah. prison and feel like, yeah, this is me. I, I actually succeed in prison. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whether I'm selling cigarettes or doing whatever, yeah. I succeed in here. Yeah. Some of the crazy shit I heard, people say, listen, I ain't gotta pay no bills here. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got to take care of my kids, I get three meals, yeah, and whatever, 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 really feel like that they somebody. Nothing, you in prison, water you free, nobody, that water ain't bro. free, man. <laughs> that shit ain't nothing, man. I used to man. kill me Possibly like, life. they feel like they run this place, this, yeah, I'm a king here. So yeah, that shit crazy. And, like, they don't mind being up. Yeah, that's why a lot of them end up with all them letters. <laughs> J's, K's, all type of crazy They got so shit, many bro. letters, they got so many letters. <laughs> Get too comfortable. Look up the definition of institutionalized. We're gonna put it on the video. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, read read this definition. Institutionalized, right? And it's gonna tell you once you have a routine for so long, it don't yeah. even matter what the routine is, you're oh, institutionalized. Yeah. institutionalized. Yeah. Even if you could be institutionalized from a routine on the streets. Yeah. Yeah. But the one that I'm talking about is from being incarcerated. Yeah. And because you had created these habits for being down for years doing the same Thing, the same schedule every single day. Yeah, man. For, I, come on, man. I spent over 10 years of my life in prison. You yeah, know what man. I'm saying? So every single day, the same thing. To get out and have to change completely. Habits that you have for 10 years, yeah. you got to change. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to make something of yourself with society trying to look at you crazy. People that's up the hot, you know, bougie people might look at you crazy. Oh, you got a background. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case is. Man couldn't get a bank loan. Man couldn't get a HELOC on his own property. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And the property had value. Yes, it does. That's what's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's how they try to hold you back. Just because of his background. I, I never heard of that. I never even would have thought of that, bro. Yeah, Out of man. all the real estate books, the man, this man, no, I talk yeah. about real estate every day, yeah. bro. And I think I think it goes back to them being picky about who they, you know, biasing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's just about, because they can get a loan of whoever they want to get it to. But they just, you know, my I didn't fit the criteria, you know what I mean? Like that just be ways of trying to get you to go back yeah. the wrong direction. Just be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you said, self motivation. That's, yeah, that's you gotta have that. You what are the um, that. business ventures? Well, what I did, I did. Oh, the nonprofit. I did. I got the. Uh, oh yeah, let's talk about the, these nonprofits. The hard to help a hand. The hard to help a hand is a nonprofit organization that me and my wife created while I was in work release there. And, and what it, what it is is like you know, nonprofit is a five hundred one three c means, but at-risk community helps at-risk community. So, almost all hoods are at-risk community. You know what I mean? Yeah. We come from the ghetto, we come from the hood. So, we were going to figure out how we can give back to the community when we reach a certain level in financing. Like, what can we do without getting money from the hood? How can we give back? My wife was like, she want to give, like, you know, food out, she want to give clothes out to the, you know, homeless people and stuff like that. So, I said, that's a good idea. And me, personally, I just want to help, like, kids and people that's got them difficult time with trying to find somewhere to stay, whatever, like making like a little halfway house, you know, some type of home for them, like a little shelter or something. So that's where the idea came in. So we started it. And that was that was in 2015 when I, yeah, and we went through LegalZoom. And LegalZoom created the nonprofit for us, you know what I mean? Because me personally, as a convicted felon, I know they were going to let me do it like that, not what a nonprofit. What kind of fundraising do you do for your nonprofit? Well, we, like I say, we, we host a little event. We host an events at our property. Like, and what we do is like utilize items, retail items, not for sale, but for nonprofit. You know what I mean? For donations. For donation purposes to, you know, exceed a capital gain to put back into the nonprofit to help, you know, support what we're trying to do with the community. Oh yeah. <clears throat> do any type of investing, like stocks. Woo! Do I?
Okay. I, um, <laughs> passive time. <laughs> I personally started learning about the stock market some time ago. <laughs> but, but I got into it. I got into it majorly. I got a um, I got a stock broker's like a stock market. They got it. They call it a license. So I got a license, a broker license, a broker number that, that I have now. I had to pay two thousand dollars for it. And I'm with Ninja Trader. I'm with uh, Trade Station. I'm with uh, T TD Ameritrade. And I do the stock. I do it on my own. I play around. Make a long story short, I'm getting more serious with it because I've been busy. But I learned more about the stock market in the last year than I've ever known in my life because of the brothers with BWO, Chris Cole I am. I got a shout out to him because he's like, he like a mentor because I signed up with BWO and he like a mentor to me. So BWO, Chris Cole I am, Dr. Chris they call him now. He taught me so much about the stock market. He got a YouTube channel everything like? Chris Cole I am. Put it down though. He got a he got the black they call it the Black Wall Street. Look look it up on YouTube. Did. Black Wall Street. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> he got that's he got a stock exchange. He I started. This how powerful this brother is, man. This brother powerful, man. And like I said, he a committed fellow. He's been in prison. And look at how successful he is outside of prison. But when it comes to the stock market, he is a guru, man. He is mean. And I learned so much information and process so much in a little bit of time. I just been unable to apply it because I've been busy with all my other stuff. But I ain't been letting that stop me because now I've been getting more serious with the stock market, you know what I mean? But I put money into Ninja Trader, Nadex, you know, a little chain to see how it works, you know what I mean? See how Nadex works, see how Nadex, what the, what the uh, tools he gave us, you know what I mean? The information he gave us and we learned. I put the money into it and I started to play around with the stock market like I've never done before in my life. And the little stuff he taught us, I've learned a lot in a little bit of time, you know what I mean? So, when it comes to the stock market, cryptocurrency, Coinbase, cracking. All these sites he put us on these platforms, I, I'm on them all. Coinbase, Kraken, uh, 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 eToro, all, all them spots, man. Yeah. I'm on all of them. And even Robinhood. I hate Robinhood, though. They don't everybody, pay out no money. They, everybody they, they, play, <laughs> they playing with your money the whole time. Everybody. <laughs> They're not allowing you to invest the way you want to invest. They play with your money. I don't like it. See, with Ninja Trader, it's on you. When you Ninja invest Trader. and do all your, like, uh, TD Ameritrade and all them different place trades, they, it's on you. You gotta be the broker. You gotta get your ass in there and do the work. Right. And I like that better, you know what I mean? So I know my money ain't being lost. What about girl, gold? Oh well, bullion stock. Chris Cole I am, once again, taught us how to buy and purchase gold. Y'all might wanna write that down or listen to it. Bullion, bullion stock. Bullion stock is a site that allows you to buy gold, trade gold, buy silver, everything. Bullion stock, you can get your account with them. And I learned that from Chris Cole I am. How you spell that? Bullion, B U L L I O N. Bullion Star. Star? Yep. Now, I got to know all this shit off the head because I'm always studying. So, you see, I'm doing this shit off the head. I know all this shit off the head. I'm always studying. All right. I want to get into a subject, right? We, when I say we went in depth and dissected this, like we got a PhD in this. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> We dissected this. We both had opportunities to work in the law library while we was incarcerated, so we got to come across books. We were having people send us information from yeah. the streets. We're gonna talk about secured party creditors. All right. Right? Secured party creditors. All right. And, and what does it mean, basically? And this man is a secured party creditor. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well, the biggest thing is what does, what does that mean, secure party? You know what I mean? Secure party creditor means you become your own banking system, your private bank. And once you become certified and registered with whatever state or whatever uh, municipality or region you in, your bond becomes registered. And that is what makes you a secure party, your bond. The fidelity bond, you know what I mean? The surety bond. Them bonds make you the secure part. And, and that now, bond got to be worth an amount that you know nobody can put a lien on. A stupid amount that nobody can put a lien on. Ten bill. Something crazy. That, it got to be something <laughs> crazy because you know ain't nobody going to come up and say, man, I'm going to pay that lien. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but um, there is a process yes, it is. to become a secure party creditor. Yes, it is. So... One of the first processes is separating your straw man, which is your name in all capital letters on every license you get, every permit you get, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's not how they teach you how to sign your name. Yeah. Because <laughs> in the Black Laws Dictionary, your straw man is a fictional entity. Yeah. Because a business, a corporation is a fictional entity. So for a business, which is the United States, our government is a business, yeah. right? It's United States of America. It's not United States of America. That's not one. The government of America, that's our business. Yeah. They have to own our bond when we are born, yeah. right? So to separate your straw man, your all capital letter name yeah. is letting the, the court system know I am competent of the living, breathing, blood, soul, flesh, me. Yeah. And I am not this fictional entity that my birth certificate is tied to, yeah. right? That my social security card is tied to. Yeah. So they do have a process. And the process ain't easy and it's long. <laughs> and they gonna make it like that on purpose because once you do this, you have to know what you're doing. I say it like this: get, anything get, incorrect. Get with. I'm gonna say the easy way to do this for instead of convicted felons or anybody. If you don't know anything about it, get with a company like Solving File and Solution. Like I'm telling you, Go on YouTube, look them up because they'll write you. Yes, you. because it's easier to get through an organization, corporation, or body. Who's already doing it? It's easier. And they they accept you. Once <laughs> you become secure, they want you yeah. a part of their society. Yeah, and then the government accepts it. So why not go through them? Because that means your documents gonna get too quick. Yeah. It's harder for you to do it on your own as an individual. Sovereign filing solution. Yes. And they're gonna take you through every step. You gotta you gotta make yourself a, a non-resident alien. You gotta create your insurity bond. You gotta send your insurity bonds and your fidelity bond to the government, United States. Uh, treasury, you got to send them from the treasury, certified mail all the way to Puerto Rico. The you know, yeah, you got to send your bonds to Puerto Rico, and that's what I mean. This is a process that if you're trying to do it alone, it ain't gonna happen overnight. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna drag you because I know people that was getting dragged while mine going through quick. They're like, bro, they need something mine back here, yeah, because they want to see who you are. Because think about you, <coughs> you're basically saying, hey, America, I want you to give me my rights back. I know who, I know what y'all doing. So now they're looking at you like a terrorist. Yeah, you talking about you're a non-resident alien, you're not a citizen. Because a citizen is what? A body. Yeah, you don't want to be a citizen. That's a body. Still part of a corporation. You're saying you're an employee of what? United States of America. Which makes you a debtor. That's why we yeah. owe taxes. You're a debtor once yeah. you file a security agreement to separate, separate. your straw man from yeah. the living, breathing you. Yeah. You're basically saying, I'm a creditor now. Yeah. You're not a debtor. That's why he's saying you're your own bank because yeah. banks are creditors. Yeah. That's why they can loan out credit. Yeah. And if you file everything correctly, you will have the same ability to do this. I say, Where go. are you at right now with your um, paperwork? I know you were telling me about the currency. And well, the secure part has been done for years now. I've been a secure party. That's been done. And I went through solving file a solution because I felt like it was the smartest thing to do knowing I was fresh out of prison. And like I said, just even with the nonprofit organization, hard to help a hand. I went through legal zone. You know, I always try to make the best decision. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, yeah, I know these people. Cool. I know these people ain't gonna accept me as me. You know what I mean? So knowing, like I said, when the banks and all this, and they already shut me down, I know this is even deeper than that. It ain't what you know; it's who you know. Sometimes. <laughs> Look, this, the banks, the banks were doing that. I can imagine what the government gonna do when I say, "Hey, I want, I want y'all to give me my straw man back." Hey man, I'm straight out of prison. I want y'all to give me a nonprofit one. <laughs> yeah, like, hell no. You know, it's just, just yeah. they're gonna drag me. So I went through the corporations and companies that I know could get it done. Entities that's already doing it. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm advising anybody who wants to go through that process to go through solving final solution because there's so many steps to it and it take time. So they gonna get you through that though because they already got that process going. They do this. They do. They say they do thousands a day. Okay. So like, what's what's the benefits? Okay, the benefits of being a secure mind? party. Why? The benefits of being a secure party is basically you are no longer bound by the debtor and all the debtor's debts or liens or uh, levies or the things that he can be uh, legally uh, 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 taxed for or, or or bound to in contract, like tickets, citations. You can now do the acceptance for value process if they give you a citation against your straw man because you own them now. So you get, oh, you giving me some paperwork? I'm gonna give you some paperwork. Let's go through the process now. I want you to remedy this because you have no authority over my straw man. 
that's the benefit. Like you, you taking the power from them and putting it back in your hand because <coughs> you, the, you the trustee now. The biggest thing though, to get part is you become the trustee and custodian of your social security number and of your birth certificate. So what that basically is, is the government no longer can do it by itself without you because they saying that when your mom with the acquiescence, acquiescence is agreeing without knowing you agreeing to something. So, when your mom and dad signed that birth certificate, they was agreeing to the magistrate to have authority over you exactly. as a citizen. Mm -hmm. Britain, Great Britain, you know, the energy. By you being created, your, your child's energy is ours now. Like a slave. It's collateral for yeah. all the work that you'll produce. So, exactly. knowing America owed them all of this money, this is how America paying them. Energy. Really, nothing has value without the people, bro. So, you exactly. know, we produce and make everything have value people energy okay. so we make the money have value because a dollar still a dollar no matter if it's a 10 or 20 or 30 we give it oh that's a 30 right now that's a hundred right that's a, oh, that's a thousand dollar bill you're giving the energy and you're giving it the idea that it's worth more than what it is still paper promissory note i did read a book where once you become a secure party creditor right i want to say it was either the right to travel or freedom to travel or something like that but it's basically saying like, if the police did pull you over because you are a secure party creditor, you don't have a license anymore. Why? Because a license is subject to the United States, right? Yeah, and because be why would you need a license to drive? Because yeah. a license to practice, to yeah. be a doctor. It's, it's, it falls back up under the yeah. ball. So the accreditation registry because yeah, exactly. to have a license means you get them authority over you, back to being a citizen. So they can find you, they can do all of this yeah. stuff. But. Remember now, your debtor has the right to acquire any license. Any license. So your debtor still can be in business. You got the right to do whatever. Exactly. That's, like, that when you make that when you become a trustee. I can do whatever I want to do. You can't stop me. That's my right. That's my, what they say, pursuit of happiness. That's my right. Yes, sir. You doing it. You got all these Google places and all this stuff around the world. You know, that uh, uh, what are the Silicon Valley and all that, that are secure areas. Y'all making all these secure areas. You know what I mean? Oh, no, Apple, all of them. Yeah. It's a part of that secure world. All corporations are part of the secure world. That's a fact. You don't know who owns them places. Secure. That's private. You want to look more into the information? UCC1 financial statements. Yeah. You need to look into every capital of every state has a UCC Register. office. Yeah. It's the Uniform Commercial Code. This is the law that you'll be going through because they. Yeah. They distinguish the law between a private and a public we in citizen. Florida, so ours is ours is the Florida UCC registry. See, that's our Florida Secure Transaction Registry. That's Can I our, hold this up. Yeah, that's ours. That's us right there. Florida Secure Transaction I'm a, I'm a Registry. I'm laminating. I've seen all I'm tearing, and I always got this thing with me. I keep it with me. Cause I don't right. never have to show them my ID. I show them this. Ain't so if you get ID. pulled over, I control my straw man. I ain't gotta show you. No I went ID. to this work my, release. This is my identity. I went to work release. My boss man from Mason Company I worked for was a moor. Yeah. He got pulled over and told the police he doesn't have any jurisdiction over him. He's a moor. Oh yeah. Type this into your program. His data, his database on his little laptop. I don't know if he went to type it in, but. He let him go for speeding. The crazy part is, my boss man used to like to drink too. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I know the police knew that man was a little tipsy. Ain't nothing you can do about it. And he, got no he, he had to let that man go. I just like diplomat immunity. It's a part of the sovereignty. So, it's, 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 yeah, it's foreign. Presidents and, uh, so, when they come over here, yeah. they can do the hell. They can kill somebody over here. And they just going to send them back to another country. You know, you know, this was crazy, right? So, I got into the whole sovereign thing at, F at Wakula, matter of fact. Yeah. Like, like 13, people were telling me about it. 14, FSP with him, he was telling me about it. And that Baker, I was hearing so much crazy stuff, like, bro, pretty much untouchable. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't believe you. <laughs> that for threw me the whole ride. I'm like, I can't go for it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They made it seem like they were so untouchable. I'm like, bro, if I get that, they're going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. They will kill that you for doing me. certain that things. That's what scared me, like, bro, I can't do it, because I feel like if I get to that level, they're going to take me out. You know Jonathan May? Remember Behold a Pale Horse? The dude that ended that up will. going to Texas will, and created his own will, bank. William um, Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. He had another dude in there. There's a chapter in Behold a Pale Horse. It's about a dude named Jonathan May. He ended up going to Texas and creating his own bank with natural resources. Coal, gas, oil, wood. 
whatever. Bro. If you brought it to his bank, he will accept it and either give you money or whatever type of natural resource you need. Bricks to build, concrete, dirt, whatever. And the government came, the feds came and said, hey, this is illegal. He said, how is it illegal? Here's my documents, my paperwork, secure party creditor. But because he ended up taking a, a little town and expanding it so much so quick, they were scared that everybody else was going to catch on because yeah, yeah. the feds was not getting paid interest yeah. off of his loans. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And everybody was able to chop down trees and bring them to him, whatever natural resource they own on their property. Yeah. It could be dirt, bro. Yeah. And they was getting See, the so much growing. The government wants you to get in bed with them with everything. They locked even, them up, when you, man. even when you're a secure party, the government wants you to get in bed. That's, yeah. that's why they say it's best to be a secure party and not a full fledged sovereign. <laughs> If you're gonna live in America. Because <coughs> a full a full fledged sovereign ain't gonna tax you. Secure party, they ain't gonna tax you. Because you saying, hey, I wanna live if I want to do business. I'm gonna secure my building. That's why I ain't brushing you no full fledged sovereign. Yeah, sovereign, you gotta create your own flag. Yeah, man. Full fledged sovereign. You need your own land. You know what I mean? You can't get nothing from the government, period. You might, you might, you wanna just stay a secure party.